What's up, guys? What you're about to see is a, uh, it's kind of a strategy call before, before a podcast I'm going to be on. For a sales organization in the Midwest. And, I, you know, I want I, I'm always trying to think about, people are always like, can you mentor me? Can you mentor me? Can you mentor me? And it's, it's hard for me to mentor people just because I have, so many things happening, uh, and I, I feel like to be a good mentor, you really have to be present for a lot. And I'm all over the place. So this is my way of mentoring you. Uh, this is my way of, of thinking through something, whether it be a podcast or a speech or whatever the case may be. This is my way of, of, of trying to understand what the other side needs, what they want, how I can be of most service, how I can be of most value. Uh, you also get a little sense of the some of the thoughts that I have around branding uh, currently about my brand. This is another example of how this, I haven't talked to this guy in 20 something years. We went to high school together. He saw me on LinkedIn, he reached out and it could lead to more business, it could lead to whatever, I don't know. But it's just, guys, what I'm trying to tell you is everything that I'm telling you is working. It really is working. So, uh, you know, it's a 30 minute clip. I hope it helps. It's, it's practical. Uh, real life, what it feels like and looks like to be running a business and to be a thought leader in space. So enjoy it. And uh, without further ado, here is the conversation. Good afternoon. Hey, Dan. This is John. Hey, John. Hey, Brian. How you doing, man? Great. Long time no talk. I think like uh, 20 years no talk. 20 plus years, yeah. It's so it's. I was glad to hear from you on LinkedIn. Yeah, I'm glad to see you're having so much uh, success. Thanks, buddy. So, Appreciate it. Um, Dan, to fill you in, this is uh, Brian Rashid. He and I went to grade school together, rode the same bus, and played football together in high school. <laughs> oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> it's a true story. And, uh, Brian, I, I've been following Brian on LinkedIn for a couple of years, and he around the world and wears shorts to work and puts out great content and i said dan dan needs to meet this guy and we need to find out find out his secret sauce so, uh, well nice to- i don't care about it i don't care about your secret sauce i want to know what john was like on the bus he was probably <laughs> he was he was pretty he was pretty unruly <laughs> no <laughs> never <laughs> but 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 oh. But with a with a good heart. <laughs> nice to meet you too, Dan. So I was I was checking out your website a little earlier, and uh, and seems like you've got some impressive stuff going on. Congrats on on the success so far. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. A lot lot of fun things going on, and um, feel like I'm just getting started. Honestly, that's a good that's a good place to be. I love that outlook. Yep, that's awesome. So so. 20, 20 years no talk. I've, John, have you filled him in at all of what we're what we're trying to do? Or I've, trying very to briefly, do? I know I know that I shared that we we've got this podcast going on, and you know we work with business leaders, and uh, personal development is definitely something that that we're looking at. So, um, why don't you fill Brian in a little bit on what what the goals of the podcast are, and then we can go from there. That that would be great. Are you okay with that, Brian? Yeah, perfect. And for clarity, um, we've got about a half an hour scheduled. Sure. I'm, I'm good with that if you guys are, but maybe we don't even need that long, give you some, some time off. Um, okay, so in a nutshell, the business that John and I work in is called Engaged Prospects, and we, we're basically a sales outsourcing business, and then we have this arm that is more of a consulting and training company as well. So we work with companies that hire us to either build a sales program for them and then house it the internal to us and we we run it and operate it and go and and either drive appointments and qualified leads or or all the way to close and and we work that whole cycle um okay. oftentimes though especially recently companies are hiring us to help them build their own sales program mm-hmm. so the employees and the sales reps themselves would be um would be employees of the client's company. And so we come in, we do a lot of sales training over a six or 12 month period. We do a lot of one-on-one coaching, management meetings, management training, 
um, all the way down to helping them recruit and, and vet candidates. So kind of the whole program, mm -hmm. including the tech stacks and operation um, components of a sales effort. So sort of a holistic approach to primarily inside sales, okay. but cert certainly doesn't need to be. Um, that's what we do for a living. Now, what we're doing for fun and to hopefully support our living is trying to create as much content as humanly possible um, from a from a marketing standpoint certainly understand the value and, and we could do a lot better but really from a a support to our sales team so mm -hmm. we currently work with about 30 different sales reps all okay. over the country and our goal you know instead of having that one-on-one -on -one where we're we're teaching them tricks of before and after a trade show what to do how to be successful we had this bizarre idea a couple of months ago of like let's let's film a 30 minute session on a on a zoom call and from now on we can send this to the the companies that are going to a trade show say hey listen to this before you go let me know if you have any questions cool and that that content strategy of course saves a ton of time and and is building up some credibility and some value for us and what our hope with guys like you would be is to to just obviously come up with come up with newer ideas, fresh ideas. It can be anything anything business related. Certainly does not have to be specifically focused on sales. Mm -hmm. But we've had some really cool talks in the past month or so with mostly sales authors that are and speakers that are talking about you know their specific message in the market and what they've seen, what they're doing, and it's just been really cool hour long, forty five minute long conversations about some pretty interesting stuff. Cool. I think that's why John was reaching out to you. Cool. Great. Um, well, that sounds that sounds cool. That sounds on on trend with you know the way that, that I see marketing going and, and branding going. And um, sp what what kind of specifically do you think? Just kind of from getting a sense of my site and the work that I'm doing on LinkedIn and everything like that. What kind of topics would be most helpful for your audience that I speak about or that we kind of share about? Yeah, so so interesting. Um, I'll be completely honest. I I've not spoken yet with somebody in what I perceive your specialty to be. So I'm not totally sure. Okay. If, if yeah, we can back a up, bit, a, yeah. a little bit different than what we've been doing. So yeah. So so our clients typically fit to two types of companies. Mm -hmm. We we certainly work with mid-sized firms, which I know is an arbitrary name, but I'd say 25 million to 100 typically. Mm -hmm. we, we work with some departments of billion dollar companies, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't count them as a billion dollar organization. So 25 to 100 million, their, their weakness or challenge is oftentimes like, okay, I got a sales team all over the country. We have a marketing message. We've got inbound leads obviously brand recognition if we're a hundred million dollar company our challenge is our sales guys got so relaxed in a sense of like farming mm. that i can't get them on the phones i can't get new meetings and our growth trajectory is kind of stagnant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's one side i'd say let's call it 40 percent of our business okay. on the other side i would say <laughs> You could put it into a smaller bucket, which would be just startup entrepreneur is either the salesperson himself or herself. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, as you probably know, these guys are, are technical minded mm -hmm. engineers, software programmers, like the last thing they want to do is be a salesperson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but maybe at first you have to be, so you go out and get 10 or 20 new clients that are usually your LinkedIn network or your incubator introduces you. And then it's like, all right, now what? I have to do cold outreach. I have to try to drive inbound leads. I've got to go to trade shows, which is the, my least favorite thing. Mm -hmm. And so they hire us for those reasons. Um, obviously that is a different animal because they're going to get their first sales as opposed to, hey, we work with some of the largest companies in the world. We just need new ones. Right. Um, personal branding is, seems like a big thing for you. Yep. Um, I know content messaging 
Uh, I don't. I didn't understand the video part. I didn't look that hard, so sure. I'm probably not stupid, but I didn't put enough time in. Uh, no problem. Can you tell me a little bit of kind of of your core, and then we can figure out how that would relate. Yeah, sure. So, so at the, at the core of what we do is helping organizations, companies, individuals, entrepreneurs, small businesses figure out what is their story, how can they tell their story, and then how can they create a brand around that story. And we, you know, we do it in, in every medium possible, right? So, the video piece is just we we tell stories through video there's we have a podcast department so we we create we produce podcasts for different companies and organizations and individuals uh, you know and so the the flow is typically like i'll come in uh and i'll sit down with the leaders the executives the decision makers whoever's kind of in charge of the strategy and we'll i'll i'll sit with them and i'll i'll pretty quickly figure out like what is the story of the company or the organization? How are you currently telling it? What kind of assets do you currently have? How could you be using those assets in a smarter way or at all? I mean, a lot of, a lot of organizations are sitting on really valuable content that they have no idea what to do with. Um, and so how do you kind of create either new content or how do you recreate and recycle and repurpose the stuff that you already have? So I would have kind of a high level meeting of here's the ideas that I think are gonna be important for you. Here's the story that I see around the, the organization that you're working with uh, or your, your startup. And then here's what I would do based on that story. And here's who I would target it to. And here's, here's the kinds of content I would create and then all of a sudden, you know, we're sitting here on a podcast call. Because I haven't talked to John in 20 years, but he saw something from me on LinkedIn and then we're talking and who knows where it goes. So I think that that would it's, it's sort of an exciting way almost from just hearing what you're saying about the sales and the startup guys and gals. It's like it's, it's an exciting it's, it's I think of it more as like pull marketing than push marketing or. If, if push marketing is still your thing where you're kind of cold calling and getting out there and getting out there and getting out there, I think that the the big the big place that people are are missing an opportunity is that instead of cold you know emailing somebody a script, what you could do is you could start to send them kind of like what you're exactly what you're saying, which is here's a value added video. Um, that is going to help you, and not only does it help the people that you're trying to talk to, but it also builds quick brand confidence and recognition for you when they're trying to hire someone. They're going to come to you because you've added value. So I think of it almost like the future of personal branding is is, and just even like hearing how you're talking about it, I already can tell that you're in a, the right space mentally to do this. It's putting out as much content as you can that is valuable for the people that eventually would want to hire you without actually selling them on hiring you right out the gate. And that has been massively helpful for me to build a brand and also for the people that I work with th that adopt that thesis, then it, it turns into a lot of good opportunities that they would have never dreamed of having. I, I love that. So tell me about, you mentioned some smaller businesses, entrepreneurs, yep. et cetera. And yep. obviously I'm, I'm sure it doesn't end just there, but when, when you have a smaller organization that you're, you're working through the process and trying to understand how you can best help them and what their story is and all of these things, I've found some, you, you might find something different, but I've, I've found myself in those conversations where they're saying to me, I have just enough funding <laughs> for either a salesperson yeah. or a marketing effort. Yeah. Certainly not both because yeah. I'm not even taking a salary right now or I just started taking a salary or whatever. Maybe that's too early stage, right? I'm not sure, but either way, they, they, the dynamic of blunt force sales, cold outreach, email, mm -hmm. um, et cetera, right? Cold calls versus your, your strategy the, the best answer is to have both. Yep. Right. Yep. But not not all companies can do that. What What do you see in that respect? Do you ever sit down with guys like that and have 
that conversation? Sure. That sure. You know, I think I think having money in your business is the most important thing. So if you have to choose between, it, it, you know, it, it sort of depends on on the vision, right? So if it's I'm not going to be able to make payroll in the next twelve months unless I make more sales, then probably you should start, you know, focusing more on sales. But what the I think that di- there's a couple of things. It's a good question, and, and I think about it a lot because I do work with a lot of people that say that. The first thing is that you might be surprised at how much easier it is than you think to make content. So um, the you know this whole idea of having to have really high quality, produced, polished content. Uh, it, it's sort of do- it's it's not as relevant as it used to be. You used to have to hire a PR firm and pay them ten thousand dollars to make you a nice video that would sit on your website, and that was basically like your marketing budget for the quarter, or even even in some cases the year. Um, but now with a with the smartphone, what I would say is like I would sit down with that person, and they would say, let's say they have a very limited budget, and they can only hire a salesperson or a marketing person. I would actually sit down with them, and I would say like let's let's let me. Talk to me about what that actually means. Like, what is a salesperson going to actually do? What do you need that person to do? How much money do you need them to close? How much time do you need them to be in the office? How many phone calls does that mean for, based on conversions that you have from past data? And then what I would say is, so let's. Why don't we try and figure out somewhere in the middle where we're, we're you know, maybe you're paying your salesperson a little bit less, and then you hire a kind of a freelance marketer or an intern as a marketer, or maybe you train yeah. your salesperson to do both because ultimately. The salesperson, the 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 salesperson, if you're doing the branding game right, the salesperson is basically closing, not cold calling, because people have already been familiar with the brand and they want to learn more. And a lot of the, right. a lot of the content that that is that is that you put out can have some sort of call to action around you know hiring you or working with you or learning more, or subscribing to your podcast or getting on your mailing list, and then all of a sudden. All that content leads sort of as a gateway into the the actual thing that you're offering, and so it your salesperson's job becomes a lot easier when people have already already feel good about you because of the content. So I'd say the short answer to that complex question is figure out a way to do both, even if it even if you don't think you can. I almost guarantee you that you can. You can find an intern at the local university that wants to spend five hours a week. Or even you know five hours every other week building content sure. for you with three or four videos you can have enough content for the month. Um, you just have to you have to be kind of smart about it, and that's I think where I'm really able to come in and help people see content in a new way. So it's not that ten thousand dollar hero video that is going to break the bank. It's more like thirty two pieces of micro content that took you maybe two hours to film, but the ROI on that is going to be is going to be pretty high. It, based on the knowledge of what you're trying to do with that content. That's fascinating and agreed. Um, ironically, the videos on our website are certainly outdated, still hold true, but outdated. And they were shot, John, you don't even know this, I'm sure. They were shot and edited and posted by an intern from Duquesne. Well, Dan, but Dan, the good, the good, the good news is like the fact that you guys are doing this. Even you know, this is me just like trying to add value to you guys right now. Even if you do a podcast series, you know, and you do that podcast series on, let's just say you do it on Skype or on Google. I don't know what you're planning on using on Zoom. I would, I would yeah. try to, I would try to have you know some 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 of those podcasts be videos as well because then you know you have a four, Let's say you and I have a forty five minute conversation. Uh, about branding, about sales, about the mo- the future of modern day marketing, whatever the case may be. Now you have sure. literally forty five minutes of content, and then what what I what I always tell people to do with that is you know that content doesn't just live on a podcast platform, it doesn't just live on Apple, it doesn't just live on Google Pod, it doesn't just live on these things. It you literally then put it in every other place. Like I would put the audio file on LinkedIn, I'd put a video on Facebook, I put the video on YouTube. And that with one 42 minute conversation, you are now in seven places and then you have somebody from a university or you know somebody in your family that you can pay that was like really trying to get a job, whatever. You can pay them to slice up that 42 minute podcast 
into 42 one minute clips that you now have on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn. And, and with that one, one episode, now you have enough content for the whole month. That's amazing. Yep. Love it. Absolutely. Absolutely agreed. We actually we just, my partner and I just talked about that 15 minutes ago. Cool. We've got three for him to edit. And a guy's coming in tomorrow, ironically, from Duquesne University. Uh, you probably don't know Pittsburgh all that well. But yeah, 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 I do. Smaller, I do. Smaller private school. Yep. Um, guy's coming in. He's graduating this year. And he's the first person I've ever met with a, a bachelor's degree in the track he studied was sales. Mm. He loves sales. He wants to be in sales. That's all he wants to do. And as a project for this semester, he's going to be editing, helping us edit these podcasts converting some of some of the messages into blogs for our site perfect chopping them up exactly what you just talked about i didn't go as far as one minute i love that idea we were kind of focused on chunking it into like three or four sections of an hour interview yep but now that i think about it you know i never watch 15 minute videos unless i'm really interested in something right right so yeah make makes total sense so so two two observations or yeah two observations one very helpful and i don't want to discount that i think we should keep talking actually about about this there's some some great value um for our business sure that i'd love to pick your brain about sure number two you asked like an example of kind of stuff we could talk about that that was i was sort of role playing what we might be able to talk about yep so if a lot of our listeners are entrepreneurs and startup kind of minded folks, I think, I think a first, a good first question or second question could be, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I've got some clients. I have product 2.0. I'm ready to go to market full scale. Funding's limited. What do I do? Yep. you uh, that may not be the question, but your answer was perfect. Now, I think that's the conversation I have at least twice a week. That's great. And then and the, other, the other thing that I'd add to that is like, you know, the content play is important and it's it's been huge for, for me to build my business and, and for the clients that I work with to build their businesses. But the other thing is, if you're a startup and you have a, a, cl- a list of clients already, then you're already in a better place than most startups and you should tap into that. The best way to... You know, you know this better than anyone probably. It's like the best way to make more sales is to make the people that you're already working with happier. And so, and then ask them for referrals. And then there's another thing, which is like just the, like an, like the old school list. Like I'm constantly making lists of people that I know that I've worked with. And it doesn't have to be in my, like right now I'm almost eight years into having my own business. But before that I worked for Bloomberg when he was mayor of New York City. I know a lot of people that, that, that are in, you know, New York City that, I can reach out to if I want to grow my business more. I can reach out to that I that I met and worked with ten years ago, and I can I can tap into them into their network. So there's so many ways to make sales, um, but I just think that you know, and I, I like last two weeks ago I was speaking at Fordham's Business School. I did a a, a, le- a workshop on personal branding and then on um, how to do networking. And I think that what most people are missing about networking is that they're so focused on the take and the ask and the sale, and they're not focused mm. at, at, the, at the value. So if you're working with startup companies that are trying to get new clients, um, doing something like doing a 30 minute sales training for your team, like you're thinking about doing, is a really smart idea. How to master a trade show and sending that to every single person that's going to a trade show, whether or not they do well at the trade show or not, you're already on their radar. And you haven't yeah. tried to close them yet. You just added value to them. So I think that there are, you know, and maybe some of these people are your clients and maybe they're not. But either way, you're getting on their radar and you're letting them know what you're up to. And you're basically telling them, like, this is what we're doing. Do you know someone else that needs this? Especially when you're working in a startup community. That is really important early on to get other people that have already trusted you to refer you to other people. Absolutely right. Yep. Absolutely right. What um? So when when you are an, a guest on a podcast, yeah, I, I assume you do you do that, yep. in some increments. Sure. What what do you typically? What do you typically? I don't even know how to ask this. Like what what's in it for you? Obviously, everything you just said, I get it. <laughs> but how how can I make this 
really enjoyable and beneficial for you? Are there certain messages or thoughts you've been kind of throwing around that you'd like to have as part of the topic? Honestly, Do you care? Yeah, Just I mean, that. that's I, I appreciate the question. Honestly, Dan, I just I want to be as helpful as possible. Like, you know, I. I'm I'm so grateful for like the upbringing that I had. I'm so grateful for the like how Peoria treated me. When John reached out, I was just like, "This is a no-brainer. I'll do." I didn't even know what what you guys needed, so I was just like, I, "I like to give back as well as I can." And I feel like they're they're I'm really on to something right now with the brand, and and I think that it's it's going to become more and more common. And I I'm excited about that, and I'm just excited about sharing knowledge. So. What I want out of this is to help you guys, and and I, I believe like just in good energetic exchange. Like I'm not worried about what I get in return. It always comes back around. But I just wanna I wanna be as useful as I possibly can to you and your audience. I love it. Well, with with that said, I think um, I'm I'm very excited to have this discussion. I think we could have probably done it today. I know. Um, I, you know, it's funny. I actually thought we were doing it today, and then I, I reread the email that John sent. And he's like, "This is an introductory call," and I was like, "Okay, um, we we, yeah. we we could we can do it today if you want." No, unfortunately, we cannot. Um, <laughs> but but this is being recorded, so maybe we'll just we'll just do, use this. Um, I'll start out when we do this. Yep. We'll, we'll, it'll be a Zoom. So you talked about mode before. We'll use a Zoom call. Um, I would like to, we'll, we'll catch up just for a minute, take a quick pause, come back, kick off. I'll kick it off, introduce you, ask you a little bit of some of the things you're working on. Yep. And then we'll get into probably one, one broad question. And that question can be what we just talked about. Sure kind of d dive into some of those things and then take it wherever it goes. It could go to, great, now now let's fast forward to a larger organization that has more resources. What do you see? It could be, you know, dive deeper into the specific types of content and some of the, the tips and tricks you've found. It yep. could be, what are some pitfalls to avoid? I'm yep. not sure. Yep. But basically, wherever the conversation takes us, if you're comfortable with that. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm totally comfortable that would with be, that. That would be my preferred style yep i i'm i'm into it love it great awesome john can we uh brian can we get a date nailed down yeah sure i like that guy on the phone sure let's see dan you want to do this sooner or later i think um i don't know what next week looks like i'm, I'm gonna be off site a couple of days and then the following week is that first week of march is that right yeah, Wednesday the 26th is pretty open. That's next Wednesday? It's next Wednesday. It will not be. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be off site that day.